Recognized, Uncle Walker, D, 0, 1. Recognized, Emily of Arden, D, 1, 2. Hello team, welcome to Intel update number 10. Forever known as the one in which we actually have a bit of actual Intel to update. <laughs> this is Rich, and I'm here with Emily. Hey everybody. Uh, let's uh, open up with just a quick uh, little brief what's going on, and then we'll get into some stuff. What's coming up for you, Emily? There's some stuff coming up for you. A little bit, a little bit, because it's finally the summer, and I'm a student, which Congrats. means I'm home and done with finals and essays and all that for so a couple of months. You. Yay. I am exactly the opposite, because my wife is a teacher, and now that you have more time, I will have none. So this works out really, really well. <laughs> we make it work. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Uh, but because I am home and can actually do things again, I have some guest spot stuff coming up on other shows that I'm looking forward to. And there's a bunch of stuff in talks, but like I have next week I'm recording. I don't know when it'll be out in the world. I'll be sure to put it online when it is. Uh, I'm recording with a cool show called The Math of You that's about formative media from our childhoods and it's real cute it's a real cute show people should check it out i haven't heard it yet and uh, you introduced me to it and it sounds awesome the host reached out to me on twitter when i was like i want a guest on things if you want me to and he reached right. out and was like you have time finally because people time. have been asking you but you you're like i have no time i have papers <laughs> basically uh but he reached out and i listened to some episodes and it's really cute it's just people come on and talk about like what TV shows and music and books and comics and everything mattered to them and why and how that affects them now and what they how they experienced media as a kid. It's real cute. It's just people talking about stuff they love and it's just real fun. Oh yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And besides that, I have uh nothing's finalized for a bunch of things. I'm just kind of vaguely talking with people who are like, we want to do something with you. <laughs> Give right. us a couple of weeks to figure it out. Uh, one of those being uh, Protean City comics that we talk about here every now and then. They're awesome. And so we're going to try to get me on for something because I'm, I'm free now. So they're like, oh, you're free? Cool. Want to wanna come play superheroes <laughs> right. with us? <laughs> Which is great because I also want to come on. They've been talking to me about coming on using a character that I played on Party of One podcast uh, named Wisp who's my, my poor, adorable, broken little boy that I love so much. Your poor little doomed. Is he a doomed? I know my poor... No. Oh. He's a protege. He just, he just plays like a doomed. <laughs> he I'm does. Gonna change that, I'm going to change that playbook at some point. If you guys haven't checked out Protean City Comics yet, you really, really should. Brandon Leon oh, Gambetta so and James Malloy are amazing. It's a fantastic podcast. You should go check that out. So I, you'll probably get to record with them way before I get to, and that's awesome. I can't wait. And speaking of it, like a podcast that's similar to the math of you, like you're saying, like just yeah. getting people's excitement on. Yeah. I was recently on a podcast called Get Hype. Yes, you were. Not, talk not, not talking about Young Justice, though Superboy did come up at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. And I, I horrified one of the guests, so uh, one of the hosts so much uh, about the horrors of the ocean that she got up and left at one point. You horrified me listening at home. <laughs> But it's just, it's real. It really happens. <laughs> oh, 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 so it was directly my fault. Is that what you're it was, saying? It was the combination of like, wow, that's terrifying. And you're saying it like it's the most mundane thing. Instead of being like, <laughs> I saw a dog on the street the other day. You're like, did you know there's a fish that can see through its head? And I'm like, <laughs> right. what? Rich. <laughs> right. Rich. It's called the barrel eye, and it has a clear skull, and its eyes are inside its skull and looks around like a window. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> Emily's all, no, 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 no. Yeah. And then I have been uh, repeatedly on the Don't Split the Podcast Network recently doing our uh, Undermountain, Return to Undermountain, and Return to Un Undermountain Tic Tac's Revenge uh, <laughs> series. Which has been a kind of a hilarious part comedy, part drama, um, D and D actual play with producer Neil uh, and some of other amazing people in the uh, gaming industry. So you can go over there and pop over there and listen to me in that, which is it's been pretty hilarious. And listen to Rich and get hyped, even though we all talk about how it's terrifying. It was a good episode. I enjoyed it. I was just yep. also scared. 
is two two parter. The first part, listen to the first part. It warms you up a little bit, I think. <laughs> and then the second part is, uh, I think, uh, I think the phrase "It's SpongeBob meets Cthulhu" came up at one point in time. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, go check that out. Talking Get about hyped. lakes. Talking about lakes underwater. Underwater lakes. Yeah, Mel and Allie are awesome. Uh, all right, so enough of that uh, warm-up intro. People are like, tell us the stuff. Okay, season three details. We have some art. A single art, but an a art. Sing- a single art, which is really funny. Uh, shout out to the YJ Vids uh, Twitter account because I think they found it. It's not like it was, it wasn't a secret. It was just, it was posted on the DC streaming service page for like three days before like, the YJ Vids people posted it, and then the YJ Wiki people repeated it, and then we picked up on it, and then it kind of blew up. And then I like messaged Greg, and I'm like, so it came up on a Sunday, and they were like, you know, they were nice enough to say like, well, let me check and see. And they were like, I don't, we can't quite say anything yet, so hold off. So we couldn't get any confirmation about who they were, but the image is clearly an older Artemis. Black Lightning, and we finally see him in his kind of Black Lightning outfit. And Connor, who of course looks exactly the same. Why did you look at me like that when I said an obviously older Artemis? Uh, only because cause I thought that too. The thing is, there was something going around Twitter recently where uh, Greg Weissman, like, someone was like, oh, look, it's Artemis. And he responded with, no, it's Tigress. Tigress, And like was yeah, very right. emphatic that it was Tigress. And I'm like, but her real name is Artemis. So why are we making this distinction? It's not like just her code name. Her real name is Artemis too. And anytime Greg Weissman goes out of his way to like correct things, I get nervous. <laughs> oh. I'm just oh. like, I'm just worried that it's gonna like, like interesting i'm like 90 okay. percent sure it's artemis there's a little tiny percent of my brain that's like what if it's some other blonde woman saying? wearing the same mask <laughs> right. why is he making mm, me so why is he worried? making a distinction who knows but the rest of the image is interesting to me because i thought when they were talking about the outsiders this whole time that it was it was just an, an illusion to the comics that they were going to have like the runaway characters from the season two kind of be the outsiders, quote unquote, with Arsenal and or maybe maybe Dick teaching them or whatever. Oh, no, it's literally the outsiders. <laughs> so with two exceptions. So the original outsiders were Metamorpho, who's the the white head, white bald headed guy that you see there. He can change his body into various elements um, you can see him on a few different animated series, including Brave and the Bold and whatnot. Uh, Geoforce, who is the character of Terra from the uh, Teen Titans animated series. And, you know, she's originally from the Teen Titans comic. She was the one who betrayed the Titans. Terra is the sister of Geoforce. They're both from the same Eastern European country. And he has the ability to control like rocks and stone like Terra does. Katana, who you've probably seen in a bunch of different places recently. And then the other te- part of the team also had Halo, who is this blonde light control character. We do have someone who appears to have similar powers, but there's some speculation that this isn't just Halo reimagined. It might be a character named Solstice, who I'm not familiar with, uh, but also has kind of light control powers. I don't know where she's from, actually. Is she from the Middle East? I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. I'm interested to find out more about her. I haven't done a ton of research on her. But the biggest question is this character I was asking Greg about, which is this character that's in the middle of the shot. He's a kind of short he, she, they, are a short, stocky, almost bug-like looking character in kind of red tones with four arms. And there's been a lot of speculation. People were joking that it's a it's forearm arms. from Ben 10. Yeah, clearly. Clearly. <laughs> Rich. <laughs> There's a Obviously, Ben 10 crossover it's with four arms Justice. from Ben 10. Like, right. who else could it be? Right. Um, but one of the biggest kind of theories that I we saw running around is that it's a character named Forager. Forager. So when you're talking about New Genesis and Apocalypse, the Apocalypse where Darkseid is, and New Genesis is where the New Genosphere comes from, and the, the um, Forever People. There are the new gods, and then there are the people who reside like below the gods on the planet. And if I remember correctly, they're often referred to as bugs. 
even though they just look like humans. But there's a, a particular bug that they that they interact with named Forager, who's in kind of a red outfit, who various heroes interact with from time to time. So that's kind of one of the running theories that it might be it might be Forager. That's a possibility. And they're taking the bug thing literally. But to be perfectly honest, it's so hard to make judgment calls as to who is what until we get <laughs> until we get any more information. So unfortunately we couldn't get confirmation as to who they are as of yet. I suspect we'll get some confirmation at San Diego Comic-Con. Speaking of which, if they're putting out promotional art and we know that they've already done the final, any every final retake on the audio recordings, according to Greg, for the final episode of the show, which means the early episodes are already being animated, maybe we'll get some kind of trailer at Comic-Con. Yeah. Please, fingers Emily crossed. has all, all of her fingers crossed right now. Yes. <laughs> Many crossed fingers. So that's a possibility. And speaking of which, if the if the Young Justice panel is on Friday, uh, I don't have to work. My kids should be in school. <laughs> My wife may be working. I don't know. I'm going to try and get there on Friday no matter what. But if the YJ panel is there, then I'll definitely be getting in and I'll be getting a press pass and doing some interviews with them. If we haven't been able to get them on the show earlier, as I mentioned in the last Intel update, Greg and Brandon have wanted to come on the show since the very beginning. I actually had an interview scheduled with Greg right before the announcement that season three came up. And then as he had to sign the contract the day before we were supposed to do the interview and they told him he couldn't do interviews and it's been the same status ever since. So we're doing our best, but we're also trying to play by the rules. Um, so hopefully by San Diego Comic-Con, they'll let him off the leash and we can get everybody on. Please. 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 If, if the, if the panel is on Saturday or Sunday, I'm going to have a little harder time getting there. As some of you know, I work 12 to 16 hour shifts on Saturday and Sunday um, doing nursing stuff to pay the bills. So um, I may have a harder time getting off for that, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll figure something out. Yeah. But um, they also talked more about the platform. So what's going on with this platform, Emily? <laughs> like, don't have much, but we have more than we did. It's a thing that exists. They're doing some sort of digital immersive thing uh, called DC Universe, and they haven't given many details on what that means, but they have it, told us- Is it something that, like it's first of its kind or something? Yeah, what it's was like the phrasing? first of its kind immersive digital experience. I'm like- It's very dramatic. This sounds like the beginning of a sci-fi movie where you're going to put us all in computer pods. I'm a little worried. Uh mm. I don't want to live in the DC universe. <laughs> but right. what they have told us is that there are many, many shows coming into existence on the DC universe platform. Yeah, some, some uh, surprises too. A couple of, yeah, including live action Titans, which everybody's been talking about for a few years. That's kind of based off the cartoon a little bit. At least it's got the same base not like Rich is looking at me like I'm crazy. I just mean that the cast of characters that they've announced so far are kind of line up with the characters that we know and love from the animated series back in the day. Of uh, mm. Robin, Starfire, Raven, and Beast Boy are all confirmed. Is is there cyborg or no? Do we know that? I don't. I don't think there's a cyborg, and it probably has something to do with the live action movie. They're doing that same garbage they always do, which is like, no, we're using cyborg. You can't use him, and it's like. Why don't you have Cyborg in everything and then everybody will know? Like, why do you care? <laughs> it drives me nuts. People just, will get make... confused. We can't understand multiple interpretations of a character at any given time. Yeah, just so but, dumb. But that ruling is what gave us Miss Martian on Young Justice, so I am i can't always hate it. Uh, that's fair. Wait, that was the Donna Troy thing, right? Uh, I think yeah. One of it, she was supposed to be one of the Wonder Girls. I don't remember which one, but they were both on lockdown and they couldn't use either of them, so they oh, got Miss gotcha. Martian, and I gotcha. love her. But yeah, we've got uh, some cast announcements for Titans of uh, Brenton Thwaites. Is that his name? Yeah. Is playing Robin, playing Dick Grayson, Robin, right? Who we know and love from Young Justice, former yeah. former circus performer, after his parents' death, trained by Batman to fight crime. Later becomes the leader of the Titans in his quest to step out from Batman's shadow is apparently the official word on that. I know, right? Some of the phrasing of some of these descriptions are interesting. Yeah. Uh, but Brenton is, uh, he's an Australian actor. And the only thing I know him from is The Giver, I think. That's the only thing I know him from. <laughs> interesting. I didn't, I didn't even know that. I forgot that was a movie. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, well, I just saw it not very long ago, and then I I saw on his um like background stuff it was talking about that, and he's Australian. Actually, two of the four actors that we know of or that I know of are Australian. The main characters are Australian actors, which I found interesting. Uh, but rest of the cast, we got uh, Starfire is being played by Anna Diop, I believe. If somebody wants to correct my pronunciation, please mm-hmm. do. Who, of course, an alien princess with the ability to shoot energy bolts and fly, who seeks asylum on Earth and comes into contact with the Titans. We've got Raven, fan favorite, uh, being played by Tegan Croft uh, as a young mystical empath who is the daughter of a demon <laughs> and whose powers are driven by her emotions. Tegan, Tegan, I think, is the other Australian actress. She's Sounds only been like in a couple of things, too, so she's kind of shooting right into this from yeah. uh, only a few shows. We'll see. And then we got uh, Ryan Potter playing uh, Beast Boy, a teen who developed green skin and the ability to shapeshift into any animal as the side effects from a drug that cured him of the lethal, lethal disease Sukatia? Sakusha? Sakusha something? That's the way I pronounce it, Sakusha, and I'm just rolling my eyes that they're going with the Sakusha thing. Because <laughs> they didn't do it in Young Justice. I don't, see, For I don't know reason. if these write-ups half are from, like, the write-up from the show, or these are just somebody who threw these together. Because his original awesome. origin is that, <laughs> is that there's this African disease in a particular very small area of Africa that is contagious turns you all green, allows you to change your DNA at a fun- fundamental level to shape change subconsciously into animals, and then kills you in 48 hours. That's Sakusha. Welcome to Sakusha. So they he contracts it because his parents were researchers who were in Africa. He contracts the disease. His parents cure him of the disease, sort of, or at least they, they cure its lethality. And that's how he became who he was in the comics. So I'm curious, like, <laughs> where are they going with this? Like, are they, they probably won't take it literally. They'll probably hopefully do something that's a little bit less grounded in 1960s comics, but. Oh, comics. But Ryan Potter did the voice of Hero in um, yeah. Big Hero 6. And I'm super excited about that because uh, I'm glad to see that because I love Big Hero 6. And he's reprising the role in the animated series that's coming out as well. The Big Hero 6 animated series, which is cool. I know for a while there was a thing going around online of a lot of people. I think he even said it himself that he would have been up for it. A lot of people wanted him to play Tim Drake in anything ever. Oh, yeah, because he's a martial artist, too, I understand. Yeah, Yeah. A lot of people were like, Ryan Potter would be a perfect Tim Drake. And he was like, if they ever offered me Tim Drake, I would take it. Uh, But now he's in the DC universe in a different way. And I think it'll be interesting to see that. Well, I I do like the idea, aside from I do not know what the martial arts prowess of Brenton Thwaites is. <laughs> um, but, I mean, if you're playing, if you're playing, I keep saying changeling, if you're playing Beast Boy, I, I want Beast Boy to be athletic. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I want him to have that kind of full, like, self-awareness of his body and his movements. It will come across in a way with somebody who studied martial arts extensively that it won't with someone like, you know, me. So there you go. Um, but also the two big surprises for me <laughs> that they just dumped the day that they opened the website. Well, one of them the dumped the website and the other one was later. One was Swamp Thing. I'm like, oof, boy, I love Swamp Thing. But that original series they had back in like the 80s was hard to deal with. <laughs> that costume, one of the costumes was bad and they had a movie too. Anyway, but this one's being directed by James Wan, who is doing the Aquaman movie, which... It, you know, by all accounts so far with people who've seen the early stuff from it, uh, looks pretty great. So that's pretty awesome. Um, the only information we have about that is it's a, it's going to be a one hour drama series. Um, it doesn't say whether it's live action or animated. I'm assuming it's live, uh, one hour drama. And basically there's a CDC researcher. So for those of you who don't know, Swamp Thing, uh, was a, a, a scientist, a botanist in the comics named Alec Holland, And he gets killed and or murdered, depending on the story, dumped in the swamp. The swamp has mystical properties. Sometimes there's chemicals involved. He becomes one with the swamp. It gets rewritten later on when the Vertigo titles came out to where there's a whole mystical aspect to it where he connects with something called uh, the red or the green. I don't remember. There's red and there's green. One of them's animals, one of them's plants. I think the green is plants and the red is animals. Anyway, it's... 
he com- he basically becomes one with the with the world. If you want to see a little bit more about Swamp Thing, you can see Justice League Dark. He has a quick spot in Justice League Dark. But Abby Arcane is his love interest. Um, she's a CDC researcher. She's going to Louisiana to investigate some kind of swamp-borne virus or disease. She and Alec are either already in a relationship, maybe, or they get in a relationship there while they're researching stuff. And then, of course, he you know dies, quote unquote, and then the story takes off from there. It's the only other thing we have is that it's estimated for next year, 2019. And then the other thing, I've been talking about Doom Patrol on the show. They're doing a Doom Patrol series. So just this month, they announced Doom Patrol. And then they actually also announced that it's a spinoff of Titans. And that the character that I was just talking about, the Chief, I was just talking about it in the recording of the latest um, comic commentary... Niles Calder is going to be a recurring character in Titans and he's going to spin off into Doom Patrol and it's going to take up, pick up where the events of Titan, I quote, will pick up after the events of Titans. Does that mean that Titans is a miniseries, that it's going to be a Netflix 13 episode run with an arc in it that ends and then Doom Patrol? I, we don't know yet, but it's also estimated for next year release, but we don't have a director or actors or I don't even know. So at least that we know of. Yeah, I haven't been able to find anything, so there's not much left. And then they had one more show. Which is uh, Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn's getting an animated series. Mm-hmm. Uh, 26 episodes, half hour adult animated action comedy series is the official tagline, it seems. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's coming from the Powerless creative team. There was a show oh, right. for like one season that was kind of like The Office meets Superpowers. Uh, from what I understand of it. it is being run by like the cousin of Bruce Wayne or something like that. Something like was, that. I, something I didn't actually like see that. it. Yeah. I never saw it either. But uh, the team behind that uh, is teaming up with Warner Brothers to make this. And it's going to focus on Harley, who has apparently broken things off with the Joker and is attempting to find success as a criminal on her own in Gotham City uh, alongside Poison Ivy and a bunch of other characters, uh, but Poison Ivy is the one that they call out because friends and or love interests, depending on the interpretation. And it's it's a thing. There's a little bit of concept art out there on like the DC Comics website, but they have talked about how that was very early concept art and whether or not that will stay the the kind of art design of the show is still up in the air right now, apparently. But that will be happening at some point. A little half hour, half hour comedy. I'll I'll uh, throw out that that what little information we have about Swamp Thing I got from a Variety article. Yes. So they're kind of it's none of this is not a lot of this is coming from the actual website. Yeah, the Harley Quinn stuff is from a Deadline article, but then it was also shared by DC Comics. So right, I'm assuming it's I'm assuming that it's all right and good. Yeah. Yeah, and then of course we have uh, Outsiders as well. I was surprised that the Harley. Harley was animated. I thought for some reason I was thinking all of these shows were going to be live action, but huh. um, yeah. Apparently Harley's going to be animated. Uh, and of course, you can always find more updates about all of this if and when they release more on the DC Comics website. They've got an email sign up list going apparently to get more info on that whenever they announce it. Yeah. And that's at dccomics.com slash uh, DC Universe. And we'll have a link for that in the show notes. And that's about all we've got right now until we can get so our contacts are let off the leash to give us more. So we'll have to go from there. It's more info than we had a month ago. It's absolutely true. As far as our show is concerned, we have a bunch of upcoming stuff that we wanted to kind of drop for you as well. I've been working with Dr. Andrea Letamendi, who is from the uh, Arkham Sessions podcast, which is fantastic. You should go check it out. We've had a couple of uh, sessions we have... uh, Scheduled to have her on to talk about the psychology of episodes like fail-safe and disordered and that kind of thing. One time she had to reschedule something because of appointments. I had to reschedule something with my kids. So we have we have an interview coming up soon, but we uh, I'm just not sure when it's going to release. We've got Jim McClain coming on, the creator of Solution Squad, um, who is going to talk about comics and education, which should be really interesting. Christopher Jones is coming back on the show to, to round out our comic commentary series uh, Emily and I both will be on there with him for kind of a roundtable about a broader discussion of the comic series and a behind the scenes of how comics are created and how the creative process works with writers and inkers and letters. It's going to be really cool. We're also in talks with a bunch of other people for a bunch of other talks that we kind of haven't 
finalized anything, but we're reaching out to people yeah. like Sarah Rhea Werner, who is the just incredible creative powerhouse behind the amazing audio drama Girl in Space. If you're not listening to Girl in Space, go listen to Girl in Space. I love it. I just started it. It's really good. They're like 30 minute or less episodes and yeah. um, it just started. So you can you can catch up pretty quick. So it's really intriguing. I feel they've got less than 10 episodes, I think. But yeah, it's go incredible. check it out. It's so cool. Mystery sci-fi sort of thing for people wondering. Uh, we're also talking to Danny Shepard, who is the star of the internet YouTube miniseries Nightwing, where he played Nightwing. Yes, he did. Yes. So that's going to be really cool if we can get something finalized with him. We're also talking to Sage Hyden. I'm talking to Sage Hyden, uh, who is the writer, who is just a writer and the creator of the Just Right YouTube channel of video essays that are fantastic, analyzing uh, writing lessons from film and television and occasionally books too, but a lot of it's focused on screenwriting and it's fascinating. Some of the stuff that they that he goes into over there is just fascinating. I've also been talking with uh, Rob Scarra and Tom Nguyen from uh, Nerds on a Roll playing Golden Glove and The Singularity respectively about if they would like to come on and talk about some things. So we're in talks with both of them to see if they want to come on and have discussion episodes because we love our buddies over on Nerds on a Roll. We do. Yeah, and I think we're we're also trying to reach out to some Protean City people for yeah. another another uh, masks RPG. <laughs> Brandon and or James and or all of the rest of the cast are always invited on, but Brandon's actually um, done a done a bit of a, a recent binge through on Young Justice, and so we're trying just to get time to time to get him on the show to talk about all kinds of stuff again. Check out Protean City. Check on, out Nerds on a Roll. We love it. And then our next Elseworlds review we were discussing. We think we've decided that our next Elseworlds review is going to be Gotham by Gaslight, Woo! which we both uh, we both enjoyed uh, for various reasons. I haven't seen it yet. I have not seen oh, it Oh, no. I thought you, oh, no, you just know some of the things that happen. I just, I just know some of the things that happen. <laughs> I, gotcha. I don't know the actual plot of this movie. I just know that <laughs> Batman and Catwoman get to be cute and romantic sometimes. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> that's uh, all I know. I don't true. know what the actual plot of this film is. Oh, that's so funny. Because when we were talking, you were like, oh, yeah, let's do that. I'm like, okay, great. Because it's good. And you were like, yeah. And then you were like, wait, I haven't seen it. <laughs> it's because I'm trash. It's got uh, it's got Batcat in it. That's yeah, I'm Batcat yeah. shipping trash. So, of course, <laughs> that's the one I want to watch. Uh, speaking of shipping as well... <laughs> More of Emily Emily's shipping trash corner. Uh, Super Sweethearts is coming. It is happening. Uh, the next one is Chalant. I am going to be outlining and recording that in the next two weeks or so, and then that will be in the schedule as soon as possible so all of you can hear me talk about Dick Grayson and Zatanna being cute and what <laughs> we can learn from their relationship because it's, it's real cute, guys. They're yeah. real cute. <laughs> And then uh, our Patreon backers, it's been a while since we've had an Intel update where we've done some a few things. So we're actually going to give a quick shout out to all of our Patreon backers. We've had some join, some some uh, had to drop out or move on to other things, which we totally understand. And we appreciate anything that you guys offered for us. I wanted, I do want to give a big shout out to Trent Boyd, who is our first recognize uh, level backer. You've heard Trent Boyd on the show, actually. And he pushed us over our goal to be able to start us doing um, Elseworlds reviews, which we're really excited about. Thank you, Trent. Uh, and then our Alpha Squad, Rachel Dodino and Ariel Weiss. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our Beta Squad, Ashley Little and Hope Lockwood. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Uh, our Gamma Squad is David Renard, Karen Bowen, Kevin Lovecraft, Elisa Fitz Fitzgerald, Kaylee. I'm going to pronounce it Kaylee. And Mel Melinda Booza, that name sounds familiar. Yeah, thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> thanks to all of our Beta Squad and Gamma Squad people. Our Delta Squad, uh, Dennis Malloy, uh, Doyce Testerman, Roy Westerman, Troy Pitchelman, Joshua Phillips, Richard Kreutz Landry, Darcy Ross, and Jacob Blackman. We have two supporting cast members as well. They, uh, they back us at a, a, just a basic $1 level just to say thanks, and we appreciate that. Uh, and that's uh, DJD, Mr. Tigeranosaurus, uh, on Twitter. Um, he has been following us for a while and supporting us with a lot of stuff, and we really appreciate that. Thank you, Dave. And Marcus Lang as well. Thanks so much. Thank you. Even if you're not a patron, um, we'll remind you to check out the Patreon page every now and then because there's extra content over there that the patrons get early access to, but uh, there's quite a bit of that that becomes public after a while as well, usually about uh, 30 days or so, two weeks to 30 days. 
And we have one thing that still needs to be posted, right? Yes. Emily? Soon, soon, as soon as we can get everything in order for that, we're going to be posting uh, my con panel that I did uh, last last month. Yeah, it was last month at a local con where I go to school, near where I go to school, uh, talking about uh, teenage superhero teams and all of the different ways we have interpreted that concept over the years, over, I think I covered like 50 years of comics and television and films. It was a lot. But that should be up there soon. I think we're going to be posting my audio from the panel, my PowerPoint from the panel, and like my written out outline so you can mm-hmm. read through or watch or listen to me talk about all the teenage superheroes and all of their <laughs> hormone the awesome. fueled I listened to teen it. team-ups. It was fantastic. So definitely check <laughs> it out. You. If you're a Patreon backer, Patreon backer, you're going to um, to get that as soon as it is, goes up, and then um, just a, a few weeks or a month after that, if you're a non Patreon backer, you can um, you can listen to that as well. So go check that out. And that's I about it for that. that. We got a few res- reviews. We have been a while on reviews, guys. So I'm gonna do. We're gonna probably start moving to well, two things I want to say. Number one. I have gotten a thing set up where I'm getting reviews from all over the world, like 10 different countries worth of iTunes reviews because they make it a real pain in the butt to get any of all the reviews in one place. So if you're outside of the countries that I've done, we don't know. I have to go look for them. So if you do a iTunes review, let us know you did the review and what country it's from and I can go figure out what code goes with it and blah, blah, blah. Number two, the feed that I'm using for it seems to scramble <laughs> some of the dates. So if we miss your review, I'm so sorry. I'm trying to get them all organized and in order, but there may be a few in here that we're missing. So I apologize. And if we're missing your review, politely call us out online and we will try to find it. We will try and we'll try and locate it and see what's happening. Uh, The third uh, thing is that because we're getting so many more reviews now and we really appreciate that, uh, I think in our Intel updates have been few and far between. And then once season three comes out, I don't know if we're going to have any Intel updates. We will probably try to start folding uh, like a, a five star review into uh, each episode um, just so we can stay on top of them and we don't get piled up all at once. Um, a lot of other podcasts that we both that we both participate in and listen to do that. And it seems to be an easier way to to get that out there. But we do have some good, some uh, relatively short ones, and we want to get through a few of those uh, right now to say thank you for everyone who has given us a rating or review. We really appreciate it. So, Emily, you want to do this first one? Sure. Uh, We have a review called Holy Reviews, Batman, uh, from (laughs) Storyboard, who just says, love the podcast, love the humor. So thank you, Storyboard. Short and sweet. Short Short and sweet. sweet. Mic drop. We appreciate appreciate it. it. Thank you so much. Uh, the next one's called Love This Show, and it is from Archie Ryder. Thank you, Archie. Uh, this show is the perfect mashup of fandom and knowledge. It is something for everyone and gives a great analysis that makes me enjoy YJ on a whole new level. The interview and discussion episodes cover really interesting topics, and I found myself laughing out loud or vigorously agreeing, <laughs> open parentheses, or disagreeing, close parentheses, <laughs> which is fantastic, uh, more than once. Getting that reaction tells me it's a great listen. This podcast is more than just a fan recap show. It's given me a new way to look at storytelling overall. Thank that you so much. That makes us so happy. Thank you. I'm glad. Uh, hopefully it's a, it's a positive uh, way of looking at storytelling and it's helping you. I would love it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our next one is 10 out of 10 would try again from uh, <laughs> Rachel D. Pumpkin. <laughs> Uh, Who says, just like with the Young Justice show itself, I was unexpectedly blown away by the high quality content of this podcast. I came for the YJ, but stayed for the lessons on storytelling, dives into DC and comic book history and incredible discussions on philosophy, sociology and more. Even more, this podcast has encouraged me to stop lurking and start getting involved in the fan communities I've followed for years and to finally start following through with my ideas and become a creator myself. Thank you, Rich, Caleb, Emily, Neil, and all the very thoughtful guests and anyone else behind the scenes. Thank you so much, Rachel. If we can do that, yeah. what we can do anything. <laughs> I know. Wow. Uh, Rachel, I, have you, I, I don't know if you're on Twitter, but I have to tell you that there is a screenshot of this particular um, review up on our Twitter feed pinned yeah. to the top because you pretty much nailed every, <laughs> every checklist goal we had uh, for making this show. Seriously. Uh, I, I, Emily and I are both tearing up a little bit. So thank you so much, so much for uh, listening to the show. Uh, the next one is, uh, it says, 
I don't know if I can do it. We need to get Jason on here. It says, or not Jason, uh, <laughs> Impulse. It says Impulse Voice. Oh gosh, who does who does Impulse's voice? His head, name just went out of my head. Jason Christopher Marsden. Yes, yes, Marsden. He also does the voids of Cade on um, Rescue Bots, Transformers <laughs> Rescue Bots, which is a fantastic show, number one. And number two is done by Nicole Dubuque, is the showrunner on that, who wrote Fail Safe and so many other of our favorite episodes. Go check that out. He does the voice there, too. I knew that, but I couldn't remember his name. <laughs> this podcast is so crash. Uh, great <laughs> podcast. Super appreciate the passion and knowledge they have for the show and look forward to season three. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tate14. Uh, and then we have... Great stuff from Fionius. Fionius? That's yeah, what I'll go with. It's like that. Uh, who says, couldn't agree more with the points they make and they notice things I never did and I'm too lazy to find. <laughs> Would recommend <laughs> to anyone who is a fan of Young Justice. Thank you so much. As noted by how much time I spent researching gorillas. Oh, this so episode, much. This recent episode. Uh, great for DC fans of all kinds. Our last inter- our last review for the day, uh, the Davis Bros. Uh, this is the perfect podcast whether you've been a DC fan for many years or are just getting into DC lore. If you're an old fan, you can get your trivia tested by how much you can pick up on in Young Justice. And if you're a new, if you're new to the world of DC, Rich will give you some great insight on comics history. Also, the analysis of the story arcs of Young Justice help people like me become better game masters and storytellers. Thank you so much, Davis Brothers. Both of you? All of you? Twelve of you? I don't know how many there are. <laughs> Thank you, guys. And, and that's it for this update. Uh, so, of course, the best way to support the show is to share it with a friend. You can also support us with a five-star review, as you have heard, on Apple Podcasts or your podcatcher of choice. Leaving a rating pushes us up in the search ranks and helps other people find the show. Also, please continue to hashtag buy YJ Comics on Comixology and then buy the show somewhere online until that DC streaming service that we're talking about today uh, <laughs> launches out there on the internet. Uh, you can also now use hashtag Young Justice Outsiders when talking about season three of YJ. And if you want to help us get more episodes, more secret origins, more actual play podcasts, and more, please consider supporting us through Patreon. For just a few dollars a month, you can help us to do even more with the show while getting some great rewards for yourself and remember stay whelmed everyone you've been listening to whelmed the young justice files podcast our hosts are rich howard and emily booza our editor and producer is neil powell our theme was composed by emily mio our logo was created by kevin bates Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening, and stay whelmed. 